Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be talking about sulcata tortoises. I've had my sulcata tortoise, Hank, here for about four years now. And I wanted to talk about what it's like to actually own one of these tortoises. I think they're really misunderstood. And I have to admit, I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I decided to have this as a pet. So I hope that this video can help people understand them better and understand what it's like to actually keep them as a pet. So before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below for more animal videos. All right guys, so let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to taking care of these strange creatures. Now, this isn't exactly going to be a care video. Um, I think that we need to dive first into what expectations you can have with these animals before even deciding if you if you want to keep one. And two, these animals are very different. Like this isn't um, a care guide that I can just put out and like this is how you take care of sulcatas. It's a lot different than that. And where are you going? <laughs> and I take care of him way differently now than when he was a baby. So I feel like you need a care guide for each stage. So I wanna talk about what expectations you can have when keeping a tortoise like this. Uh, so here, right here joining me is Hank the Tank. And <laughs> luckily you guys do not speak tortoise so you can't understand all of the slurs and bad language that he's using towards me right now. <laughs> Come on now Hank, this video is supposed to be advertiser friendly. So he's about four years old now and I can't believe he's four years old um, because of his size. Hank, I would appreciate if you did not leave this video. This is a photo of when I got him um, when he was only a few months old um, versus the size that he is now. Absolutely ginormous of how much he's grown. So the first thing that we should talk about is size. Hank, from what I understand, is a baby. Um, they are fully mature at seven years of age. Uh, he is four, this is his size. And so these tortoises get very, very big. Uh, they're the third largest tortoise in the world. He doubles in size about every year. When fully grown, he will be over 100 pounds easily, possibly up to 200 pounds. Now, I was fully aware of how big he would be when he was full grown, so that isn't so much of a problem to me. I decided that would be okay because we live on a farm and we have the space. I just didn't realize how quickly he would get to that size or how that would affect other things about him. Like, let's talk about poop. Oh my god, this animal has some big poops. You guys had no idea what you signed up for when you clicked on this video. Here is a photo so that you can see his poop compared to the size of his body. I don't even want to think about what his poop will be like when he's full grown. I'm going to need a forklift to clean my yard. I don't know what I was expecting, like little cute rabbit poops or what, but this, this is not what I was expecting. And he's only four years old right now. Are you scared for future me? Because I'm scared for future me. Poop, pee, and then number three. None of the care guides that I looked at back when I got my tortoise talked about number three. Because pooping, peeing, it's just too mainstream for him. There's a third, and it took me a while to actually figure out what was going on. But um, these tortoises, I think as well as other ones as well, um, produce a powder, and it's very weird. It's a white powder that just comes out every so often, kind of like poop or pee, and uh, that's just another one of their, their weird things that they do. I could go on about the bodily functions of this tortoise, but for the sake of keeping this kid friendly and not completely terrifying you in this video, let's move on. One thing I had not realized about these animals is how smart they could be. Now, my bearded dragon is not the sharpest tool in the shed, and I think that's where I've based some of my, uh, I guess, standard for how intelligent reptiles can be and he's probably a pretty low bar. But this tortoise is intelligent and he understands the difference between me and my husband and other people. And he knows his name and he knows other things too. What really made me understand how intelligent this animal was, was when I brought him in from outside and our, we have a door that goes out to his yard where he normally stays. And I brought him in, I set him down in another room and then later, he walked himself back through the house all the way to the other side of the house to that room where his door was to his yard and he started banging on the door. He understood that that was where he lived, that he lived outside. 
um, in the, that yard, and he wanted to go back there. And him being able to understand, remember where you know we went through when we walked, and I was carrying him. So he actually understood all of that, and that really showed me how intelligent he was. Now, my idea of having a tortoise was that it was going to be cute and simple and somewhat, you know, easy to manage. That he was going to be a little bit shy, but sweet and just, I guess, an, an easy pet. <laughs> but uh, he was shy a little bit as a baby, and then as he started getting bigger, he's gotten easier to interact with, which is really cool. But besides being easier and friendlier to interact with, he's gotten incredibly stubborn, and I know that that's gonna make it difficult to care for him as he gets even bigger. He is pushy and won't let anything stop him from getting what he wants. When housing tortoises, it's best to provide them with solid walls. If they can see out, they will want to get out. If he can see somewhere he wants to be, he pushes everything out of his way to get there. When he is loose in the house, he will unplug my computer cables because it's hot around that area and he tries to shove himself in between the computer and wall. Now, here's one thing that I think makes this tortoise incredibly ill-suited for most homes, the digging. I knew the holes were going to be bad, but I thought the holes he would dig would be large, not deep. This little guy is trying his best to dig to China. The dirt in his yard is hard, and after a few inches, it's just clay. So I thought that would prevent him from really being able to dig too much. Nope. He has a hole that we can't find the end to. I really cannot imagine what kind of destruction he's going to cause when he's full grown. And now, through more research, I've learned that these tortoises can have burrows that are over 30 feet long and 20 feet into the ground. But articles like this weren't around four years ago. Now this really isn't so bad because I live on a farm and so Hank has plenty of space and everything and as he starts to get bigger, it's not gonna be an issue. But Having this in a neighborhood, I just don't think that would work. Um, it, it would end up horrible, like there'd be so many problems and this could end up underneath someone's house. Like if that's what could happen. They just dig these crazy holes and so there's just, I think so many things you would run into, so many problems you'd run into ha trying to keep this in a small neighborhood. And two, like there's also the scary thing of the tunnel possibly collapsing like I just hate to even think of him getting trapped but you know that's what he's supposed to do this is his natural behavior and I don't think you can necessarily keep an animal from exhibiting something that is just so fundamentally part of who they are just because you are afraid of that action and let's talk about health it seems like these tortoises are very hard to take care of and to also maintain their health and I think this is because the information is so conflicting um, but I feel like I can provide some insight having had a tortoise and understanding where I went wrong and things that I did right I hope I can help people take better care of their tortoises and I hope I can help put more information out there on the internet so that people understand what these guys need because it's not been easy trying to figure out what the right care is. The first thing to address in regards to health is that they flip over on their backs and if not corrected, they can die from this. Hank doesn't really do this anymore, but for the first year and a half, he would flip over all the time. I've been working from home way longer than I've been on YouTube, so this wasn't a big problem for me. I'd catch it pretty quick and fix him. But I can just imagine if you work eight hours a day, you can come home to a dead tortoise and it's not your fault. It just happens and if you don't catch it in time, you lose them. Now that he's bigger, he is just a lot more grounded and understands how to get around without falling over on his back. The second thing is pyramiding. This is something that only happens in captive raised tortoises. The whole shell grows wrong. Here are some examples of this. The shell will be uneven in all sorts of ways. Extremely bad pyramiding is usually metabolic bone disease that is caused by not getting enough calcium or not being able to process calcium. And that can happen in all reptiles, but with tortoises, there are also other things that can cause pyramiding and includes things like humidity, overeating, eating too much calcium, and so on. To be honest, there's no consensus on what exactly causes pyramiding, and it seems like it could be a number of things. So raising a tortoise like Hank, who has a pretty even shell, is very hard to do. People think that tortoises will be easy pets, and that's why you end up with things like this. And personally, I think that the biggest mistake I made with Hank 
was not keeping a high enough humidity level for him. These tortoises are from the desert and most care guides do not show you that they require a high humidity. You would think that in their environment they don't get that. But the truth is, is that they do spend so much time underground that the humidity is actually a lot higher. And it's also important to understand that these tortoises need UVV light and that is produced by the sun. They need heat and they do not hibernate and that means you can only keep them outside all year if you live in a tropical climate. I have to bring Hank in during the winter and it kind of sucks. He has less space and he grows a lot slower in winter. There is a difference between being outside in nature compared to inside, even with the right kind of equipment. So that leads me to say that these are not indoor pets. You should understand that when people get a tortoise like this, they can't be kept in a turtle box in your house. Eventually they need a whole room to themselves, but this is not ideal for them. I keep Hank inside about four months out of the year. I think it's pretty manageable. But this animal should not live inside year round. I can tell he's unhappy during winter. I hope people can understand this and choose to not have this pet if they live in a climate that is not suitable. And lastly, let's talk about his age. Now the most important part of deciding to get a pet is understanding the life expectancy and how long you'll have this animal for. You need to be able to keep that animal for its entire life. In the case of this tortoise, that can be a hard thing to answer. There are documented cases of this tortoise living way past 100. But it's also hard to determine their exact life expectancy because it is so long and there isn't enough information. So most care guides you see will say that they live about 70 years. This is probably underestimating their lifespan, but we can probably say that this tortoise will outlive me. And that creates a big problem for keeping one as a pet. Hopefully he stays healthy and safe and does live a good long life. And that means that at some point, I'll have to figure out what will happen to him when I'm not around to take care of him. And my options will probably be to leave him to a family member or find an educational group to give him over to. And this is something that you don't have to think about with most pets, especially when you're young. Luckily, he won't be as emotionally attached to me as other types of animals and should do well if he ever has to be cared for by another person. So if you decide to get this as a pet, you have to think about what will happen when I can't care for this animal any longer. And that's basically everything that people do not tell you about owning sulcata tortoises. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. You know, I'm still in a learning process myself, trying to learn more about these amazing animals. And it's gonna be a long road ahead of as he grows, as he gets bigger, but hopefully I can share my experiences. I can tell you what I got wrong and I can help other people make better decisions when it comes to these amazing animals and also just maybe deciding if it's not the right pet for you thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it be sure to check me out on instagram and twitter and i will see you guys next time bye